Okay, welcome to lesson 11, our first part on definition of congruence. You will need your math journal and your lesson worksheet. And again, summarize the important points in your math journal um, for the discussions, and then go ahead and complete the exercises and examples in your lesson worksheet. All right, so let's starting off in your math journal. Again, write down any information that is uh, important and uh, summarize it so you're not wor writing word for word. So sequencing basic rigid motions has been practiced throughout the lessons of topic B in this module and for the reason is in general the sequence of a finite number of basic rigid motions is called a congruence. Uh, keep in mind finite means a specific number. So a geometric figure S is said to be congruent to another geometric figure S prime if there is a sequence of rigid motions that maps S to S prime. For example, we call it a congruence of S is equal to S prime. So the notation related to congruence is the symbol, the equal sign with a little squiggle on top for lack of a better description. When two figures are congruent like S and S prime, we write S is congruent to S prime. We want to describe the sequence of rigid motions that demonstrates the two triangles shown below are congruent. For example, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. So what rigid motion will bring the two triangles together? That is, which motion would bring together at least one pair of corresponding points, vertices, be specific. Well, we would translate triangle A prime, B prime, C prime along vector A prime, A. Or we could do another vertice, it doesn't matter, we could do B prime, B or C prime, C. But for this example, you, we'll use A prime, A. So what rigid motion would bring together another pair of sides? And again, be specific in your description. Well, we would rotate some number of degrees. We don't know how much because we haven't been given that. But we can say rotate D degrees around center A because now the vertice A is going to become our point of rotation. So after these two rigid motions, we have shown that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime through a sequence of translation followed by a rotation. Notice that only two rigid motions were needed for this sequence. A sequence to demonstrate congruence can be made up of any combination of the basic rigid motions using all three or just one rigid motion. So the concept of congruence between two geometric figures is one of the cornerstones of geometry. Congruence is now realized as a sequence of basic rigid motions that maps one figure onto another. So recall the first question raised in this module, why do we move things around? Now, a complete answer can be given in terms of congruence. It is said that S is congruent to S prime if there is a congruence so that the congruence of S prime is equal to S prime. This leaves open the possibility that although S is congruent to S prime, the figure S prime may not be congruent to S. If there is a congruence, number one, so that the con first congruence of S is S prime, do we know that there will also be a, a second congruence, or congruence two, so that the congruence two of S prime is going to go back to S? Asked in another way, can you say for certain that if they begin with mapping figure one on a figure two, can you also map figure two back on the figure one? Well, hopefully you said yes, but without proof, further work is necessary. So assume that congruence is a sequence of 
a translation followed by a reflection where there is a translation along a given vector, let's call it MN, and there is a reflection across line L, let the figure on the left below and let S prime be the figure on the right below. So here is our figures. So then the equation, the congruence of S, is going to be equal to a translation of S followed by a reflection. So in order to get from S to S prime, that means we have to translate first along MN and then reflect across L. This says if we trace S in red on a transparency, then translate the transparency along vector MN and flip it across line L, we get the red figure to coincide completely with S prime. Now keeping in mind what we know about how to undo transformations in general, is it obvious how to get a congruence to map S prime back onto S, namely tracing the figure S prime in red, flip the transparency across L so that the red figure arrives at the figure in the middle, and then translate the figure along vector NM. Note the change in direction of the vector MN. The red figure now coincides completely with S. The sequence of the reflection across followed by a translation along vector NM achieves the congruence. The general argument is that there is a congruence one so a first congruence, so that the congruence one of S is S prime. Then there will also be a congruence two, or a second congruence, so that congruence two of S prime is equal to S is similar. The only additional comment to complete the picture is that in addition to the sequence required to show that congruence two followed by congruence one is equal to congruence one followed by congruence two and a reflection is undone by a reflection across the same line. We also have to draw upon the sequence of rotations that maps a figure onto itself to be certain that each of the three basic rigid motions can be undone by another basic rigid motion. So in summary, if a figure S is congruent to another figure S prime, then S prime is also congruent to S. In symbols, S is congruent to S prime. It does not matter whether S comes first or S prime does. So we can read that statement again right here as S prime is congruent to S. So let's take a look at exercise 1A. Remember that we want to match up a point first, then match up another point so that we can create a line segment that can be used to reflect across, try it and compare your answer. So when you're done with exercise 1A, continue the video. All right, so this is what you should have as a description of how to get S to be the same as S2. So let there be a translation along vector AB. Okay, so here's our vector A to B. Therefore, A becomes B. Then let there be a rotation around point B, since that is what our two points are going to equal up to. You're going to rotate it D degrees. We don't know exactly what the degrees are. You're not going to use a protractor to figure it out or to estimate. We're just going to state that it needs to be rotated D degrees. Then we're going to, because what happens is this creates a line of reflection along this line right here and which is being described as the longest side of the figure so that S1 maps on to S2 and that comes after the reflection. So once we uh, match up the line segment from S1 to S2, we use that as our line of reflection and we will see that all the points of S1 will map on to S2. So then the translation, how we describe this, is the translation of S1 followed by the rotation followed by a reflection is going to equal S2. All right, now using that example, go ahead and try your hand at exercises 1B and 1C. 
Again, model your explanation, your description after 1A. All right, you should have 1B and 1C complete. So here's the description for 1B. Let there be a translation along vector BC. Let there be a rotation around point C, D degrees. And in this case, to keep them separate, they do D sub 2 degrees. So that S2 maps onto S3. Notice how we don't need a reflection in this case. So to summarize, the translation of S2 followed by a rotation is going to give us S3. For part C, let there be a translation along vector AC. Let there be a rotation around point C of D3 degrees. Let there be a reflection across the longest side of the figure so that S1 maps onto S3. So therefore, a translation of S1 followed by a rotation followed by a reflection is going to equal S3. Because we found a congruence that maps S to S2, we have S1 is e or congruent to S2. And another congruence that maps S2 to S3, which is S2 is congruent to S3, we know for certain that S1 is also congruent to S3. So kind of like the transitive law in addition, it's the same thing that we can apply to congruence. Do we really need to do all this work we did in part C of exercise one? Well, no, the reason we don't need to do all of that work is because we already know that translations, rotations, and reflections preserve angle measures and lengths of segments. For that reason, if we know that S1 is congruent to S2 and S2 is congruent to S3, then we know for a fact that S1 is congruent to S3. So let's summarize the basic properties of all three basic rigid motions. A basic rigid motion maps a line to a line, a ray to a ray, a segment to a segment, and an angle to an angle. A basic rigid motion preserves lengths of segments. And a basic rigid motion preserves degrees of angles. Do you believe these same facts are true for sequences of basic rigid motions? Well, specifically under a sequence of translation followed by rotation, where there is a translation along a vector AB and there is a rotation of D degrees around a center O, will the figure that is sequenced remain rigid? That is, will lengths and angles be preserved? Will lines remain lines and segments remain segments? Yes, because sequences of rigid motions also have the same basic properties of rigid motions in general. So given that sequences enjoy the same basic properties of basic rigid motions, we can state the three basic properties of congruence. So our first property, a congruence maps a line to a line, a ray to a ray, a segment to a segment, and an angle to an angle. The second property, a congruence preserves lengths of segments. And the third property, a congruence preserves degrees of angles. All right, for exercise two, complete exercise two, since you get to choose the degree of rotation, there is not an answer key for this problem, and you will present your congruence to your table group. All right, so to summarize, we now have a definition for congruence, i.e., or example, a sequence of basic rigid motions. So we have effectively taken the definitions of all three basic rigid motions and combined it into an overarching um, definition of congruence. We now have a new notation for congruence, which is the equal sign with the squiggle on top. And we know that the properties that apply to individual basic rigid motions also apply to congruences. All right, we'll see you in class.